What's up fam, doing a market recap video for a very boring day in the market. Well, at least for the stocks I was watching. Wow, I had to have two extra large steep teas today to keep me awake. Tonight's cigar night though, and wine, so I'm excited. Um, after really looking at what I'm watching here today, although it was a consolidation day, it made me pretty bullish now, looking at the chart, sitting here, thinking about what's going to happen next. I'm going to walk you through it. Then I'm going to get into the tickers that requested. This video will likely be a little bit longer than 20 minutes. We'll try and get through all the tickers requested. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. How's your trading going? How's your April been? Leave me a comment. You know, March was devastating to a lot of people. They had a hard time recovering at the beginning of April, but this later move in April I should have been paying some dividends for you. And don't rush. Don't rush about getting back to your all-time high. Rush your mentality to growth. Think about, I just need to be better than what I was yesterday. I need to be better than the trader I was a month ago, six months ago. You know you're progressing. If you've been watching my videos, you've been putting in the time, you're putting in the work to become a better trader, so you're progressing. Think about it. Where you were six months ago, where you are today, where you plan on being six months from now. Reflect on where you've been where you are and where you want to go. So much room for growth. It's not always about, hey, you need the accounts to be up at all time highs. It's not always going to be like that. I haven't made a new all time high yet. From February's high to where we are here in April, two months, I have not got back to an all time high. I am close, not super close, but you know, one big trade will we'll hit it. I'm trying to see if, uh, if we're going to catch that, I've had some big trades since, but not the appropriate sizing to get me back to an all time high. Now, that's how I manage myself. Whenever I get into that higher low protective mode, I don't go and try and make it back on the next trade. I try and have solid trades. I, I try and keep everything at a good risk to reward, not oversized. I don't like to get aggressive because when you get to the higher low zone, if you get aggressive and you're wrong, boom, lower low and you're in trouble. And then you're like, oh, I gave back way too much. You don't want to do that. So don't think about, hey, April, the market's trading at all time highs. The market's at 414 or 418, whatever. And you need to be back to where, where you were in February. It's not, it's not that easy. It like, depends what you're playing and what you were playing along the way. The trend is your friend until it ends. And when it ends, it ends you know, significantly like we saw in growth stocks. So if you were playing growth stocks and you got a hit and you're not back at all time highs and you're doubting yourself because the market's at all time highs, well, not everything's at all time highs. Think about what you were playing. If you were playing individual stocks like Skills or you know the FUBUs of the world, those types of names, of course, they're, they're not at all time highs, so you're not gonna be back at all time highs. Did you grow? Did you learn? Are you ready to adjust the next time that scenario presents itself? That's all, that's all that matters. And if you wanna be a professional and think like a professional, that's all about growth. It's not about hitting those targets right away. Yeah, I wanna get back to where I was, for sure, and I'll get there. I don't know if it's going to be in May, right? June, July, but it's going to come. Well, it better be by July. Jesus, I give myself some credit. Got to get there by July for sure. Ideally, it happens in May. I like what I'm seeing in here. You should like what you're seeing too. Looks like we're going to have a great opportunity for a big run. And that big run should start now. If I'm wrong, it's not going to start now and we're going to be looking down. But in my opinion, we should be looking up. We should have a bottom right now in tech. So great opportunity in tech. Let's talk about the why, right? We know we're trading at all-time highs. We're trading near these highs. I'm thinking we're going to have one, one more run up here. I'm charting off of NQ1 now. Just so you know, TradingView used to charge for e-mini futures, used to charge 50 bucks a month, 50 USD. And you could chart off a NAS 100, SPX 500. You could do a US 2000. But now they've changed it. The change is to $4. So fantastic. Take advantage of this. This way we don't have to chart off of something that we're looking to react, you know, mirror, not react, mirror what's happening on the E-mini futures. So change that all. So all the charting done now with ES1, NQ1, RTY1, that's what I'm looking at. Hey, big news, TradingView has made me an affiliate. So I'm waiting for the affiliate code. So if you're looking to sign up for TradingView software and get a discount, that's coming pretty soon. And I'll talk about it at the time that it comes. It should be within a week. They sent me the instructions today. I had to fill out some stuff. So that's coming soon. Let's talk about NASDAQ today. So we had a consolidation day. You see when the bell rung today, they dropped everything. It wasn't just the NASDAQ, SBX, that everything just dropped. Everything on my watch list anyways, just fell right at the bell. So you knew they were taking us to a destination. Now, where was that destination? Let's talk about it here on the NASDAQ. So we know we have our highs. 
So let's go look at this. Let's draw it across our highs right in here, right? We've got our highs right in here and we have our lows right in here. So we know we have our two zones. So we're rejecting this zone in here. So does that mean we're going to double top or was today a fake out to the downside and now it's going to be a dip and rip? No. Here's what I'm thinking. So let's draw a lower trend line in here. Let's draw one, you know, use this candlestick in here. You know what? Let's use a shaded color. Let's go in here and let's go off of our top. Now off of our top in here, you know, we've got two touches. If we use the real bodies, we can bring it a little bit lower. Let's watch out for that zone. Now we have our lower trend line and I use this wick here. You know, you can use whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm really focused on those two candlesticks at the bottom. So I'm going to use this one. We'll see what, what it's going to react to eventually. So now we had a sharp move in here. Okay. Pivoted off our low, retraced, double bottom, sharp move to the upside. Now we started to consolidate. When we consolidated here today, one of the key points was that we didn't break down below here. Like, why is that? We're talking about Fibonacci rules, right? We didn't really want to break down through this zone after we topped out in here. So if we think about this move, do we have a opportunity for another leg up? So coming off of our bottom, let's fix this up in here. We have our first move, our retracement, our big move to the upside, right? Our low. Now, what I'd be doing is looking for a move back up, breaking through the zone. If we think about often how these patterns end, the end in wedges, which you could call a diagonal as well. This is what I'm watching here in the market. So now I'm thinking, coming off of that low, are we gonna reject here at this upper trend line or are we gonna push a little bit higher? Let's run an extension move off of this low, off of our bottom to our top to our retracement in here. That's what I wanna check. So let's take a look in here. So off of our bottom to our top, this would be the end of the third move. And then we'd be looking down in here at the bottom of the fourth move. So 618, right? Or one to one, we'd be pushing up a little bit higher. That's what I'm gonna be watching here in the market. Now, we could just reject right in here. This would make sense. We reject right in here and that causes the end of the move. But I would be looking at this as it's gonna get going right now, right off of this zone. It's a perfect back test of the breakout, right? We had a false breakout in here. You can see we immediately came back down. Let's look at that with the ADMA. ADMA bounced. Today we lost it, right? But that was okay as long as we held this zone. If we think about what the retracement was in here, what was this retracement off of our lows? Let's look at this off of our low here, which is a double bottom off of that low 0.382 extremely healthy. If we think about off of this move in here, right? Where did we go to just under the GP 0.786? We closed above it. Everything's looking very healthy. I love the lower trend line. It does look like we have a diagonal pattern, which tells me we're going to look higher and this is going to be our base. Now we had good earnings from Google good positive reaction. We didn't get a positive reaction from Microsoft, but what have we got here going on in futures so far? Let's double check in here. Futures, ah, it's up a couple points, so nothing significant. Google gave us good earnings. Microsoft delivered best earnings ever, but they didn't get a positive reaction. So now it's about Amazon, it's about Apple, it's about Facebook, right? This low, we should not lose it tonight. Double inside bar here on the four hour chart. We wanna see that bull break. Get back up to the zone. We know we would have weakened this zone. Now, if we trade sideways going all the way into tomorrow, I'd be surprised because then we'd be breaking out through this lower trend line. So I'm going to anticipate this lower trend line is going to hold. So when you look at your charts tonight, this is all you're going to be doing. Looking that this does not get breached. That we hold this, we start to move to the upside. If this gets breached, then we start thinking a little bit differently. Okay, we start looking at this from a different perspective. But as of right now, that's why I'm thinking we're gonna go up, retest those highs, and then make a new all-time high, which is then going to pay dividends for the market, right? And we're gonna be looking at the market from a very similar perspective. Now, this is what I was looking at this morning that we had the potential of a little bit of a rising wedge in here, which we did. And now we've been grinding back up towards that upper trend line, right? Lower trend line, we've been grinding towards it. We didn't see sharp movement. Bears had opportunity today, and you could see those constant opportunities were being bought up. So that tells me, Market's thinking destination and it tells me we're going to be thinking higher. So instead of that, we're going to be looking at this exactly how I just drew it on 
on NQ, exactly the same. We'd be looking at this as our bottom retracement. It's a back test of this zone. Everything's mirrored, everything lines up perfectly together. So now I would be thinking the exact same thing. Coming off of our low, which is here. All right, coming off of our low to our top. Oh, that didn't work. Let's figure it out in here, try it again. Coming off of our low to our top. And why am I coming down in here from our low? That's like an Elliott wave rule. We can look at this from a different perspective, multiple perspectives, but you go from the bottom of your first move to your top of your fourth, top of your third to the bottom of your fourth. And then you start thinking about that 0 0.618 or the one-to-one -one extension. So those are the two zones I'd be potentially watching. Now we could look at it from a different perspective, just running a, you know, just running a fib extension the way I typically like to do it. And we would still be looking at 42.5, 42.3, or even the 1272, right? Which I don't have leveled off. But right now, this is what I'm gonna be watching. That we have this diagonal pattern, we're gonna see another move to the upside. If we don't reject in here, we're gonna be looking at this maybe in here, right? That's the way I should have drawn it to begin with. If we don't reject in here, we come up into that zone. And then we can see if we're gonna hold this as a back test. Overall, I'm feeling very bullish. I love the back test. I love where we back tested this double, triple bottom in here, back testing this range. That's exactly what the bulls wanna do. We do not want to lose a zone now. Tonight, when we watch futures, this is the key. We do not fall below, ultimately, the 416. Ideally, we just hold this trend line. Hold the trend, hold the trend line and start thinking about a new all-time high. Let's go check out the Russ. So we're still in those Russ 230 calls for next week. We saw a little bit of a move down, a little bit different setup than what we're watching in NQ, but I imagine everybody would melt up together on our final. And I do think it's gonna be the final run before we go for a lengthier period of consolidation. When we go for that lengthy period of consolidation, whether it's in May or in June, we're gonna see where this is gonna top, is it gonna be a selling May and go away event this year? When we do, you have to have a game plan. How are you gonna manage it? Are you gonna take your risk off? Unlike the first time, where people were still just buying a dip, buying a dip, and then they could put capitulate at the end and then don't want to play tech earnings don't want to play the tech run up so make sure you have your game plan ready for that event now we came up today um, still struggling in this zone right we're still struggling in this zone we still have very strong support in here if we lose the 228 the 230s will lo lose value you'll likely get down to about 10 15 percent i think they're still trading at about 42 percent if you're in next week's may 7th but really, we don't want to falter through the zone. I don't want to lose our support in here at 228. We want to break through this zone over here at 230, of course. Then we're going to be well into the money, and it's going to be a nice pay. If we're coming off of our lows in here, think about this move right down in here. All right. Let's get that on a line chart. Let's go to a four-hour chart so we can condense it a little bit. Right in here. We lost that level today. Okay, so we did lose that level today. But look at those lower wicks. And this trend line here is completely unsustainable, right? It's too, too vertical. So what we're doing right now is looking at those lower wicks in here, right off of here, coming in here. Let's see if we can hold this. It's still pretty vertical. It would be fine to lose it as long as we would hold this support in here. If we lose the support, we have to consider, are we gonna come back down and test 227? This is a bull flag. Everything's looking good here from a bull flag perspective. Let's fix this up. Let's just use that as our pull. Beautiful pull. We got our channel developed in here. Very healthy consolidation. Nothing to be really concerned about as of yet, unless we start seeing some significant bear pressure to the downside. I would be looking at our pull right there bull flag we want to get that follow through tomorrow because if now is going to put in the low like i'm looking which means we remove today into the apple earnings amazon facebook who else is left who else is left i can't remember there's a couple more big dogs left right bull flag pop russ catches a a bid with everybody else in the market and we start thinking into this 233 and potentially 2379 so that's what i'm going to be watching in the market Going into tomorrow, no morning live tomorrow, no videos tomorrow, so that's it, that's the game plan. We don't wanna lose those lower trend lines. Ultimately, Russ, we don't wanna lose that 228 zone. 
at least from a short-term perspective. Overall, it could be fine. We come back to, into the 227, back test, we make that our support, and then we look for our next leg up, which would mean you might want to get a little bit protective, and then once you see that dip being bought off of the zone, you can start thinking again about repositioning. Let's get into the tickers that are requested. We did a lot today already during afternoon Zoom Live, so it looks like not too many requests coming in. Wow, it was very nice of the community not to smash me tonight, but let's get into it. PLBY. And I know everyone is looking short in here and there is an opportunity for a short for sure. You just want to be a little bit careful that you don't oversize and you get in too big too early. Yes, the chart is extended. Yes, we have bearish divergence that's forming on this chart significantly. This weekly ADMA is far too, far too extended. We know there's a correction coming back up. But oftentimes these names could just continue to melt up and it becomes frustrating when you're trying to short it. Just like when you're trying to buy the oversold balance and it's frustrating because it keeps on going lower. That's what happens when you're trying to go counter momentum. Perfect entries don't always exist. Spinning top candlestick today. Bearish divergence. Inside bar tomorrow, potential. Let's zoom in here, check out this upper trend line on the four hour. It does look like a rising broadening wedge. Everything is telling me there's a correction coming, but do we need a further push up before the correction comes? Create significant bearish divergence. Maybe we'll set up a climax, although I don't love it from a climax perspective anymore because the volume is dropping off. And that concerns me if you're looking bearish. While the volume is dropping off, we start to trade sideways. And when you start to trade sideways and you're going puts so far out of the money, it doesn't work out, right? Time goes against you. Decay goes against you. We trade sideways. And then we see another push up, which creates significant bearish divergence. Then that's the sell signal. So keep that in mind. But overall, I see what everybody's saying. There's opportunity here. Upper trend line. You know, new highs, not getting much follow through, bearish divergence on the daily chart, setting up, weekly is far too extended, there is opportunity in here. Let's go check out the Tesla. Big dog, earnings, uh, didn't deliver, right? Didn't deliver, I mean, the earnings were a beat, but the market knows the earnings were a beat because they sold enough crypto to be profitable, right? Government grants, all that stuff. People don't like that. People wanna start seeing that they're, you know, it's not about the government grants and because they sold just enough crypto to be profitable. So, you know, the market gave us a little bit of a bearish reaction. How significant is that bearish reaction? It's not significant at all. Look at the volume. Nothing. No significance to it. Now, this zone remains to be our key resistance zone. Now, we had a lower trend line triangle in here that the bulls would have liked to have held. We've lost it. But oftentimes when you have a triangle, you might need to redraw it, right? You might need to redraw it. We might need to, you know, see if the dip is bought tomorrow and then we're gonna be looking from a triangle from that perspective, right? We'll think something along those lines. We need to prepare ourselves. As of right now, I can't trust the bear move because I see no volume. I see no significance to the consolidation day today. So let's see what happens tomorrow and do we need to readjust this? We also haven't lost daily support. Let's keep that in mind. Daily support down over here at 690. If we lose 690, uh, of course, you know, now, okay, we're getting a better bear reaction. Bears are happy. As of today, did the options puts really pay? I don't think so. On that much of a move, I didn't check, but I don't think they would have paid. So I don't think anybody's happy with the reaction on earnings. But we're going to need a little bit more information. Let's see if we're still going to form a triangle. Let's see what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't like the bear volume to say, here we go. That's it for Tesla. And, you know, how everyone's calling for, you know, big move down. We're going to need to see some exit pressure. We're going to still need to see that, hey, people want people want out. Doesn't look that way yet. So we need a little bit more information. And of course, if we see a bullish reversal hammer setting up and bull volume coming in, you know, people are going to be all over Tesla and it's going to be a payday for a lot. Let's check out ERX. So daily energy bull two times. So two time bull energy. I mean, if we look at what's happening with CL, right? Um, we have opportunity here that this triangle is getting ready for a breakout, right? Getting ready for a breakout. So I'm watching this in here, see what happens tomorrow and in the coming days. If we reject that upper trend line again, that'll validate that upper trend line from the wick perspective. If we look at it from this real body perspective right in here, you know, that could break tonight. I mean, we're right on it right now. So we're gonna see what's the reaction in here. So when we think about anything two times energy or energy, we're gonna be looking at CL. What does CL do? We could continue to base and trade a little bit more sideways in this a, in this triangle in here. This is a A plus setup in the market. We were talking about this with Sherf today. Very much an A plus setup in the market, and we're going to need to react to it. 
So positions already is a good thing, right? Yeah, that's fine. Having a position before the breakout and then adding on the breakout. For me, I always like to wait a little bit, unless I'm super confident in the trade, uh, get your foot in the door. If you got your foot in the door here, it's a triangle, it's, near, it's trading near that upper trend line, potential breakout coming on energy. Let's go check out the big dog. Amazon, how many big dogs are there, right? I call everybody big dog. Well, if you're Apple, Tesla, Amazon, you're considered big dog. Microsoft too, but I don't know. I don't ever call them the big dog. Okay, looking at this here. We still pause in our key supply zone, right? Both like confirmed. We got a gap up open. We filled the gap. There was a little bit of selling pressure today. Look at this from a line chart perspective. What did we do? We closed at our highs. Look at this from a hike and ashy candlestick today. Breaking out, right? Candlestick did not continue to catch a bid up today. While the NASDAQ was consolidating, this looks pretty good. So now it's about tomorrow, right? No, two days from now. It's about Thursday. Are we gonna run into earnings? Deliver on earnings, major. Reminder, we had a major base, major base. We deliver on earnings, we're going to be, I mean, that's going to obviously cause the market to fly. If they do that reverse split, it's likely to cause the market to fly. And then we're going to start thinking up to those levels. That's what I'd be watching on Amazon. Let's check out Bragg from the Canadian perspective. All right, so single sports betting, getting closer to legalization. You know, we're still, like we could be looking at this from here now, right? Right in this zone. Still trading under this trend line. You can still draw the one from the upside. We could be looking at this in here now that we're not gonna break down any further to those levels and see if we form some form of a triangle down in here. We gotta get closer to single sports betting passing. It's in the center right now. Same thing with score. We need a little bit more time. No volume in here, you can see the nice, Bullish candlestick off of our bottom, no fall through bull volume, trading sideways. Let's watch this upper trend line in here. It's almost a quad inside bar. It's just a slight tick below. Watch the significant the signal of volume coming in, bull or bear for a breakout. Let's go check out DoorDash. Now, this is an A plus setup in the market. Congratulations to those that played it today. Um, I thought about it, but then I had other positions. And I didn't take it, but you know, I, this is a trade that I put in Rick's trade a couple weeks ago or last week, I can't remember. It's an A plus setup, and we're heading to those targets. We were thinking in here to catch that higher low, and it's continued to go perfect. Yesterday was a pause day in the market. Today we got increasing bull volume, still not significant bull volume. You like to see that tomorrow. A little bit of an upper wick, it's an hourly bull flag going into tomorrow. Okay, it's an hourly bull flag going into tomorrow, essentially right in there. Now you want to see that break tomorrow. So if we do trade within this range going into the bell tomorrow and we have an opportunity on break, and we see the volume, we trust it. Looking at 172, 181, more upside on this move. A plus set up in the market right now. XOM, exactly what we're talking about with CL, right? We're waiting for CL to get going. If it's going to break that triangle, this is a significant base of consolidation. Are we going to have one more fake out though? Is it going to be a bounce? and then drop and then run. I am looking for more X upside in XOM, but we wanna see it, right? We wanna see the movement, we wanna see the momentum. I don't wanna get into position trading sideways for too long because then, you know, it's, a st it's stale and you're committed to this position and you start not taking on other trades. That's what I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see some movement in CL, getting that break and then XOM following, but they do have earnings coming up this week too, so keep that in mind as you're watching XOM Twitter. Let's see what's happening here with Twitter. Yeah, Twitter is a really good setup actually. Exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing as we're looking for in the market. Exactly the same thing we're looking for in DoorDash, which has already started to happen. Uh, exact same thing we're looking for in Uber. This is an A plus setup, as long as we hold that low. You know, if we don't hold this low and we come down to the 0.76, it's less enticing. You wanna see a movement now. Earnings coming up. End of the week, what is that? Tomorrow's 28, 29, Friday. But this is ultimately what we've been looking for. But you wanna start seeing that movement. So today, consolidation day in big tech, right? Twitter would obviously be affected by that. We get the break tomorrow. If the NAS follows the path that I'm thinking it's gonna go, then we'd be looking for some more upside in Twitter. Of course, we wanna see momentum, break today's high, and then start looking up at our resistance in here. That's what I'll be watching on the Twitter. Let's go check out IPOE. Let's check it out here, IPOE. Okay, so we have lower highs, lower highs. We have an upper trend line that's been pushing us down right in here. Let's see what's happening on this chart, right? Right in there. That trend line's been pushing us down. We wanna get a breakout over that zone. 
what do we got going on here? Do we have a falling channel minus those big lower wicks that push us down? Upper trend line, increasing bull volume we wanna see. I'm going to anticipate because we don't have the volume in here, we're going to set up a lower high in this range under that 1820. Then potentially we can come back down and set up a right shoulder. We look for our left shoulder, our head, a right shoulder, inverse head and shoulders. Nice little momentum, not enough volume to get me excited that we're gonna be able to break through these zones. That's what I'd be watching on IPOE. Let's check out Uber. Uber did not have a good day today. Like a lot of names in the market where we were consolidating. It's a little bit confusing in here now. I'm surprised, you know, we were getting the higher open. I did think we would see a push up into that GP. We didn't get it because everybody pushed back. The thing I've been saying off of this move, and I think people often get sidetracked on where we went. Don't forget, we bought off of the bottom, right? And we locked in that trade the day that uh, Biden did the wealth tax, right? Which was this candlestick in here. So we're kind of nice to move off of the bottom. And the next day we got in before the breakout and then it broke out. But the entire time it was breaking out, my message has been, there's no volume, right? There's nothing to get excited in. So I don't want to go in with second entries and get in with big size when I don't know that I have the support behind me. I have a little movement in the market with no real volume. We want to see the volume coming in. So today we started to retrace back down. We had a higher open, didn't get any follow through like everybody else in the market, big names in the market. And then we started to retrace. So if we think about off of our bottom in here, we're looking at a couple of zones. 0 0.382, ideally. We don't want to lose that zone because then we've got a lot of work to come back. But we could be coming back in here, back test this lower trend line, back test the GP before a run up. A close below the GP, but obviously this is going to be a dead trade for me. But if we do drop into here and we pivot off of the zone, I'll add a second entry. No momentum as of yet. Today's a bearish and golf candlestick. You can't trust it because of the volume. We get a bullish futures market today. Let's just say that NASDAQ pattern does come to fruition. We get the breakup. What's what we're going to do? Exactly like yesterday. We were trading higher. Look where we closed. Look where we open. We'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll open near the top of the range. Still be an inside bar potential. Guys, let's focus on the volume. And this is why we went further out. We wanted to allow further out and not too far out the money because we want to allow time to develop, but we don't want to be buying 65s when that might just be our target. 60s this zone because i do anticipate we're going to be able to revisit the zone that's what i'm going to be watching we could be looking at this from this perspective now right we want to see that bullish reversal hammer tomorrow if not if we're not opening up in an inside bar we want to see a bullish reversal hammer let's go check out DraftKings. DraftKings had a bunch of news today what did it do here after hours is up a little bit yeah like a lot of names in the market right we had a higher open pull down what are we gonna look for on DraftKings now? We're gonna look for an inverse head and shoulders. That's ultimately what we're gonna be doing in here, left shoulder, head, right? Try and catch that right shoulder wherever we're gonna to dip to in here. Bullish futures, we look for higher open, we look for an inside bar tomorrow. Volume insignificant. Big reversal on the gap up, gapping into resistance on no news, no volume, that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna get sold off into, but because it's a lack of volume and it was a lack of volume dri driving us up, I'm not gonna to be too concerned and I'm gonna anticipate we still find a higher low and we trade in this range. That's why I'd be watching on DraftKings. Let's move on, talk about XLU, uh, utilities. All right, so this has been a hell of a move. We're consolidating now, we think about this pivot to our top. And we start thinking about that retracement on XLU. Where is it going to be? Okay. And ultimately, we want to close below the 0.5. Everything else should not be in play. The golden pocket should not be in play. We should be thinking we lost the 0.236. We're looking at these two zones, 0.382 and the 0.5 at 64. If we think about a back test into this range, these upper wicks that were giving us the problems, that's a potential zone in there. And why is that line drawn there? A previous resistance zone as well so that's 65 zone makes sense we can back test in there or we're gonna come all the way back down to our breakout back test which would just be below the 0.5 and then we get a bullish reversal hammer and close over the 0.5 I would be looking for a pivot reversal on this chart ultimately it is setting up a weekly bull fight all right we look at that on the weekly we just want to see a lower wick now form and tell us we have the weekly bull flag and then we can start thinking for our next leg up on XLU Let's go check out MMED. MMED put in a reversal today. Three gap up, Sanku reversal. That's it. We should not be looking higher, although there will be opportunities. There will be movement. We got to fill that gap. We have a gap down here below. I don't think we're going to see this gap anytime soon. But what I will be looking for, if we do get a gap down tomorrow, 
then to look for a pivot back to the upside. Inside bar, very, very likely potential, but whenever you have a third gap up, be ready to sell. Massive volume on the exit. Bearish engulfing candlestick. Be patient if you're trying to get in this trade, unless it's very short-term trades. PayPal, let's check it out. And PayPal's been looking pretty good too, right? Yeah, very similar to a lot of names that we're watching out there in the market. We started to get that movement now today, consolidation day, everybody saw consolidation. We're still looking at our resistance right in here that we need to get a push up over. That's what we wanna to see tomorrow. Get that follow through, get that break over here and get a spike in bull volume. 0.382 is holding on this retracement. That's looking pretty bullish. We should be looking for a move to the upside. Bear volume is very, very weak. Get that bull volume, break that double top. That's gonna be the focus, 277. Let's move on and talk about Facebook. Facebook moving after hours with Google. 308.40, this is a big bull flag. We should look tomorrow, follow through. Intraday trading, you get a run up into earnings, potentially. Now, if we gap, depending on if we hold this or if we go higher, be wary of the potential gap fill, right? Be wary unless the market's looking really bullish, like the potential that it has. If not, we run. We're looking at all-time highs, potential stall in here, unless that bull volume is huge. That's what I'd be watching on Facebook tomorrow. Last but not least is GME. GME, triangle, right? We closed down inside of it. Okay, these wicks, these wicks. We closed down inside of it. The bull volume wasn't there. We got the gap up. Now, I still like it. I do think we have opportunity for some more upside. Why? Let's impulse some move in here off of those lows. We retrace back to our area of resistance. And that's the, zero, that's the zone we want to bounce off of. So we would be looking at it, you know, something that looks like this, right? Drop and then pop one more time. That's what I'd be looking for on this chart, GME. So we want to catch the higher low. We don't want to lose that four hour ADMA. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great night and I'll see you in the chat room tomorrow. Peace out everybody.